Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show here at Amherst Media with the assistance of the Amherst League of Women Voters. We have a very special guest with us this evening, new to town, but boy is she making her presence felt. Gabrielle Gould is the executive director of the BID. What is a BID? It's a business improvement district. What is a business improvement district? So um, the short answer is that it's our job to make sure that our downtown is thriving, our businesses are marketed properly, and we work with them to create uh, programming and other things that drive our locals and visitors to come into Amherst and support local businesses. Terrific. And this is not a brand new organization. This has been around for a few years. I believe we are six years old. Six years mm -hmm. old, but you're brand new here. I am You've been new. here for a year. A year, a little and over what, a year. what brought you here? Um, so we knew that our kids were not going to go to high school where we moved from. We started looking uh, uh, two summers ago and trying to fig figure out where we wanted to be. Looked from California to New York to the Carolinas. And my husband uh, attended school here in Amherst and UMass really felt a connection to the location. High school's phenomenal. I think education is really re what drove this as our So education vote. brought you to town. It did. And it did. a few months later, you find yourself at the bid. Yeah. And now you are ripping and roaring. Something like that. Because <laughs> there's a lot of creativity going on over at the bid. And you know, this show is really, uh, was created last year to help make the connection uh, between the people and our newly formed government. So we're going to want to touch on Absolutely. how the bid and our town government uh, interacts. But, but first, let's do a little bit more background on this. So um, the bid is a membership organization. Businesses join it. No, it's um, a stakeholder organization. So okay. the landowners, the property owners are the um, oh. joiners. So, so the people inside of those properties are not the members. It's the landlords and the property owners. Yes, but we look at it as the, although the landlords are our members, so to speak, yes. we look at our clients as the businesses. Okay, and um, so you're here to try to help those businesses thrive. Exactly, and, and also in time, hopefully, to start bringing new businesses into downtown. So okay. we will start going out and doing economic development on another level for our landowners. Okay, so downtown, downtown. when we think about downtown, we think about the Jones Library, and we think about City Hall and the police station, Amherst Cinema. Emily Dickinson. Emily Dickinson. But yeah. what about the commercial area in South Amherst? And what about North Square, which is coming on strong? Yeah. That's two other commercial districts mm -hmm. in our town. What's up with this? How, um, do they, how do they relate to this? Well, I think everything in Amherst and our surrounding communities relates. Um, you know, there's the, the age-old saying that rising tides um, ri raise all, and we say shops instead of ships. Instead of ships. So okay. what we want is success all across the board. We want you know density all across the board. We want people to want to live in Amherst, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, this is a great community. It's a beautiful place to be. How do we entice people, first-time professionals, young families, um, maybe people downsizing and retiring, maybe people just ready to get out of the city? How do we say that Amherst is where they want to be? Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon Sherry from the Jones Library said the other day that Amherst has everything but the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was such a great way to sum up and simply tell people who we are. We have everything but the ocean. Um, so North Amherst, incredible what Cinda is doing over there. Really love it. You know, it's coming online, as you said, really fast. And then you've got the entire East Amherst village and everything going on there. We all love going down there for dinner at uh, um, Mission Cantina. Um, but a bid is really a specific district. So okay. although our office <clears throat> focuses on that, we work hand in hand with the chain we work very closely with the chamber um, to not only bring other businesses into downtown for events and things like that, but it's cross promotion. Mm -hmm. And why not? Because if we could convince someone to spend four nights at the Boltwood, 
you wouldn't say just stay in Amherst, right? Mm -hmm. you, or, or even in the business in, district, yeah, you'd right. say, make sure you go here, make sure you take right. these hikes, Mount Tom, you know, yeah. all these amazing things that are yeah. around us that complete us. Um, we're not directly on the river, and yet we benefit from the river, and right. we want people to explore the river. So, so I think that there's a really big you're symbiosis. You're focused on the downtown because that's your core constituency, but this is also about economic development for the whole community. The entire community. And um, so while the, the programs aren't necessarily happening in the other commercial districts, mm -hmm. uh, you you see it as one economic uh, pool here, which is the town of Amherst and, you know, uh, tons of people stop at Atkins when they're coming for whatever direction they're coming from. You make the turn and you make the you make the turn Atkins, and you get there. Absolutely. Exactly. So, Absolutely. Okay. And yeah. so um, uh, about a six-year-old organization. Yes. And you're the second director or third? I believe I'm the third. The third. There was a very brief uh, first director for about a year, and then Sarah LaCour took on the bid for, I, I believe, five years and did an amazing job, gave an incredible foundation for someone like me to come in. And she and I have, have sat down and, and spoken a couple of times and um, our skill sets are very, very different and very uh, complementary. Mm -hmm. So I feel like she set us up for an incredible... She created a big foundation, she, she a did. solid foundation Absolutely. on which to build the next yeah. generation and of work. And set us up for success for the yeah. next five years. That's great. So. And so you've only been in the job five months. So mm -hmm. what, are you, what have you seen? What have you observed? What's sort of driving your thinking about the, the work and the plans for the bid? So we're concerned about downtown. Um, mm -hmm. On a national scale, we see small towns dying all over. And whether that is because we all can sit there and click Amazon and have something delivered to our home in some places within two hours, let alone 24 hours, whether it's the big box, you know, is um, Walmart more appealing to the American public than a, you know, small shop that has, you know, your bath goods and things like that. So mm -hmm. there is concern about any um, small businesses, you know, across the nation and, and really across the world. I was at an international conference for this um, organization, for bids across mm -hmm. the world, and it, you're hearing it all over the place. So there is concern about downtown, but from our standpoint is what does it need? It needs more arts and culture. And mm -hmm. that is going to be a really big driving force behind um, the bid. And we have created a new foundation, and it's called the Downtown Amherst Foundation. It's almost got all the pro uh, appropriate stamps. We're great with the state. We're waiting for IRS. We know we've done it right. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on forming a board for that. Uh, we want a really diver diverse board of time, treasure, and talent. Yes, we do want some bid members on that board, but it is not a bid board. It is a mm -hmm. much bigger um, institute, uh, you know, sort of thing. And our hopes and goals and what we presented to the town council a couple of weeks ago in a five-part um, presentation called Destination Amherst is bringing back the uh, performing art shell. There was a band shell contest, things like that. So we're looking at a little Bring bit differently. Bring back the band shell. Yeah, so I've lived in town since 1967. I don't ever remember seeing that shell because Where it never happens it? um the Where history was it? it never happens because oh. the history of it is that um all of these organizations in 91 the rotary came to the town and said we're going to build you and donate a band shell and okay. they lost the vote by i think two votes at town meeting okay. um so it's been narrowly defeated so we are coming so back it's online. been an idea an idea that's been in the pipeline for a long time various individuals organizations mm -hmm. have moved it to the front of debate and each time it's just not taken off yeah so so we're back um, and back. we're back with a lot of hope because we have a new government and where would it be we have a town council South Common South Common yeah. and if you look at the original drawings done by uh, Frederick Olmsted who designed Central Park is probably his best known um, our you know uh, green space um, he has a beautiful drawing of all of downtown Amherst and our beautiful three green spaces mm -hmm. and there is right in his drawing a performing art shell on the South Common. So terrific. So, uh, three green spaces. Mm -hmm. So we have the South Common. Mm -hmm. We must have then the North Common. Mm -hmm. And where's the third? So we have Sweetser Park. Sweetser but Park. But also now we have Kendrick Park. Kendrick, I was going to say, which probably wasn't part of Olmstead's plan because that because was all it houses. Didn't, it was all houses. So now we have right. four green spaces. Okay. Um, but even as part of our destination Amherst, there's a lot of conversation about turning the North Common. Um, which now has a park, you know, where the Mary Maple is, mm -hmm. and a parking lot. Yeah. It was never meant to be a parking lot. That was a green space. It had a frog pond on it. You know, all this other, you know, life was happening there. Mm -hmm. Can we return to that? 
is, is or something of that or nature. something of that nature mm -hmm. exactly so, so does that mean taking that parking away i believe right now what the town council is looking at is removing about half of that parking so leave some take some which means we're going to have to replace that parking yep. So talk to me about parking from the bids perspective. So it's the number one thing every business wants to talk about. It's the number one thing I hear when I say downtown Amherst, oh, I don't go there, I can't find parking. So the perception issue is very strong. Um, the town has hired Nelson Nygaard on two separate occasions. They come back and tell us that we don't have a problem. Uh, we disagree. Um, I'm sure they're quite lovely people, but we live here and we see what it is. And we know when that When was it's the last one done? Three months ago. Oh my God, that recently, that recently? And they still said we don't have They're a problem. Still saying, well, you know, Fridays and Saturdays for a period of time, we're at that 88 to 90% uh -huh. capacity. Well, um, more people are taking the bus. More people are using their bicycles. Um, I think to some uh, extent, but, but you, you've seen the weather today. We're having a yeah. horrific day here. I don't think anybody's taking the bus today if they have a car. Yeah, well, that's true. You I, know? I but I will say there. that more people are moving to electric vehicles. So whereas yeah. I won't say that we are going to see the end of the car in downtown Amherst anytime in the near future mm -hmm. because all of a sudden everyone's going to, you know, leave their pot at home and jump on a bike or jump on the bus. I do think we're going to see a lot more electric vehicles, and I think that that is probably um, ecologically the more realistic Where place to look yeah yeah but um so one of the the pieces of this five-part destination amherst is a parking garage mm -hmm. and asking the town if they would be interested in rezoning the back town lot of the cvs area so it's not the cvs lot it is a town owned lot mm -hmm. and doing an rfp for that for a public private partnership Okay, and, and public-private partnership, what does that mean to people who don't know what a public-private partnership is? So it means that the town would sign a very kind lease with some entity, a private entity, who would then build, maintain, and manage the garage at no cost to the taxpayer. Um, okay. There's several huge capital projects that are in front of our council right now. A lot of millions of dollars are on the table overrides what does that look like how do these things get funded mm -hmm. this the parking garage and the performing art shell are literally zero to the town mm -hmm. um, so the the performing art shell that we're looking at the foundation would like to build will build the hope is, is that we'll build that and then we'll donate it to the town okay so, well yeah. and uh, you'll donate it to the town but who's going to maintain and operate that for the for the future. So our capital campaign is a three-part capital campaign. It's the uh, design and build money, it's a maintenance and endowment fund, mm -hmm. and it's a programming fund. So our hope is to assist in programming this, um, to work with all the other entities that want to use the common mm -hmm. and use this stage from local ballet to local musicians, the high school, the town itself. Um, you know, we just had Black History Month. It was out, you know, sort of on the wood chips, wouldn't it be so much nicer if they had an actual stage with an actual sound system? Mm -hmm. But the foundation wants to help program it to show what is possible. So we're looking at raising enough money to program it for at least two years, show what's possible, work with Shakespeare and Company, work with Palabalist Dance Company, you know, work with all these entities while working with our community and our local arts uh, performing and even, you know, um, you know, media arts, like why not? We could mm -hmm. have films being screened on, right. you know, We used the to common. have films on the common in the summer. I think those should come back. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So um, you'll build it, you'll start operating it, mm -hmm. you're going to give it to the town. Mm -hmm. uh, government has a lot of problems with maintaining facilities. They do. Even those that are it gifted. Seems. Yep, it seems. Even those yeah. that are gifted. Yep. After all, you know, the Jones Library was a gift of. Uh, of uh, a family in the 1912s and so um, but here we are a hundred years later yeah. and we are uh, now talking about for the second time at public expense to uh, uh, restore renovate rejuvenate the physical facility itself which bring it up to a 21st century library century. there you yep. go so yep. um, so yeah and I heard this morning 250,000 people a year go through that library and then all not all Amherst residents but that means people are driving into town when they're here mm -hmm. what are they doing they go to the library maybe they stop off for lunch mm -hmm. maybe they do whatever they do yeah. maybe they go to the Amherst cinema yeah. you know what but basically people are being brought into the town yeah as a result of uh, things like the library and Amherst Cinema. But let's go back to the, the shell. So how is that shell going to be maintained 20 and 30 years from now? So again, um, the capital campaign will do a 
part of it will be an endowment and maintenance fund and there are details to figure out if we are going to proceed with this with the town who holds the maintenance fund do you know who who where does that work and mm -hmm. those are details that will be discussed at length with the council with the town manager um, definitely so with a DPW. sufficient gift will be uh, will be going to the town along with yeah. the shell to ensure that it can be preserved into the future and doesn't become a rundown shambles uh, and that it it basically is something the town can sustain and and add to the vibrancy of the downtown. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked a garage okay. and we've talked about a band shell yep. or a performing arts shell. Art shell. What else is in the plan? Um, we and this is the plan you, you gave to the town council. Yes, this is a okay? five-part plan. It's a five-part yep. plan, so we got two. We got 12 minutes to go. We've got three to go. <laughs> Um, so we are also looking at um, open containers on the common um, for alcohol, beer, craft beers, wines, ciders. Uh -huh. um, every town around us is doing it. Hadley's having a beautiful beer garden on Fridays in the summer. The Asparagus Festival, you go over to Northampton, they've got their thing, Belgertown. So why is it that we can't have that? Um, mm -hmm. And the taste has been a, you know, uh, um, what is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an anchor. It's an it's anchor. A, the taste a, has been an anchor yeah. for Amherst for a long time, yeah. but the beer has always been over on Amherst College. Well, Amherst uh -huh. College will no longer host the beer. So the taste, okay. everything that we're doing is hanging in the balance. So this is a policy regulatory thing. Yep. It isn't about this money. Is, this although is a quick bylaw change. Yeah. Um, quick okay. bylaw change. And I, I believe uh, Monday the 10th, it is going up in front of the council to be changed. Okay. Uh, the licensing commission, Doug Slaughter, um, is the, 10th the chair of that. The 10th of February or yeah. March? February. Yeah. Right, okay. right. Literally, right around the corner. Seventy-two hours ahead yeah. of us, okay. um, and that really is a game changer for us because okay. that means that not only the bid, the chamber, and other organizations can start to utilize that common in a bigger way. You know, mm -hmm. our music nights can have a couple of different craft brewers there. Beer and wine only. I would say beer, no wine, spirits. cider. Um, no spirits. Uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, I mean that's a big. Yep, difference there, between there's a beer big and difference, wine but and, we do have local okay. distillers, and wouldn't it be neat yeah. to have a distiller there? Okay. And but I think that's up to the licensing commission. Okay. That's not up to us. They will yeah. give us regulations. And so those and would we be will those would those. be one-off licenses at a time. Exactly, it's not a permanent thing. You're not putting up a bunch of things that are going to stand on the common yeah. year-round. Nope. You get Everything's an event, temporary. You go get your uh, permit and license yeah. for the event. You pay your fee. Yeah. You do the thing, you add the fun, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so exactly. that's three. Now what's exactly. number four? Um, we've got public art initiatives coming. We're working on something called Footprints of Downtown Amherst. Um, this is a concept of... If when you're at the Jones, if you ever look at sort of the sidewalk outside, way back um, the bid hosted a sidewalk uh, art chalk mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. and one of them has stayed. Mm. And it was a mistake. It was supposed to be very temporary, and it was a mistake, and it stayed, and it's beautiful. And I've had a friend of mine said that her daughter loves to go to the library because she wants to go and look at that tile before she goes to the library. Okay. So one of the things when I came on board was, do we need an app? Do we need an app that you can walk around Amherst, and it tells you where to go, and it mm -hmm. shows you where things are, and it's, you know, this way to Dickinson. And then I thought, so we're all walking. So it's a where walking. to go, a where to go app. It's sort of, yeah, a where to go app. But we're all already walking around glued yeah. to these things. Yeah, so yeah, we kind yeah. of took that away and said, well, what could we do that? wasn't that and how do we show that we're a walkable community which mm -hmm. we are um, so we came up with this idea of footprints of downtown Amherst so starting at the top of the corner of Maine and Pleasant mm -hmm. Emily Dickinson's footprints are going to walk down on the sidewalk to her house, to her house with a poem so mm -hmm. you'll have something to look at and read and, and sort of follow down to her. Okay. Uh, Sammy the Owl is going to be, we're going to paint a beautiful Sammy himself, and then we're going to have his footprints hopping to the Jones. Mm -hmm. um, at the other side coming up, so if you're coming up south to, I mean north to South Pleasant and heading up 116, we have a gorgeous um, big uh, spotted salamander who is going to footprint alongside uh, the Very Hungry Caterpillar, who's going to eat so his way. So you need the town council's permission to do this? I think right now we're working with Paul because it's a semi-permanent installation, okay. but we are presented in the town council as well. Okay, so one project is performing arts on the common, mm -hmm. and the other is visual, visual arts, arts on our sidewalks. And written poetry, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. which is also going to be like a tourism attraction mm -hmm. 
type of thing yep. and, and help people people yep. in town long enough exactly. that they're going to need to buy a meal and they might even decide to stay over at the Jeff. Yes, and Amherst so, College is going to have mammoth excuse me, footprints. It's no longer called the Jeff, is I know, it? It's Boltwood. Yeah, Boltwood. <laughs> Amherst College is gonna, going to have mammoth footprints coming into town. UMass will have his Minuteman footprints coming okay. up. And then we want to do some Nash dinosaurs and things in between. So. Okay, that's number four. Number five. Uh, oh boy, well we've got a lot of other public art commission things going. Um, another concept that we are looking at and we've met with the public art commission on and we're just waiting for approval from um, a couple of other places, the DRB, really Design Review Board, is a, we want to do a paint by number mural festival. Hmm. So a one day festival where we will create this really stunning mural to go up on a big brick wall um, and during the day we're going to have um, from two-year-olds to 99-year-olds be able to come, pick a number and a color, come if you're grab 100, the paint. stay home. Stay home. 102? Maybe, maybe two to 102 <laughs> is that that's our... Um, oh, but then we're going to put a plaque up and name all the people in the community who helped paint this mural. Interesting. Um, and of course, we are going to have the artists come and finesse it to make sure it's beautiful. How long will the mural be up? Well, it's a mural, so hopefully... So it'll be permanent? For, for eternity. So over the years, then, we'll be building up a collection of murals which will fit into the public exactly. art uh, picture of the yeah. town. And um, how about maintaining those? Uh, we had this thing, you know, uh, near the uh, Emily, uh, near the uh, West Street Cemetery, where Emily Dickinson yep. is buried. Um, there was a, a, re, um, uh, a redevelopment project, which was going to require a uh, mural be removed. Yep. And they found a scenario to be able to ensure that the mural would be uh, maintained. Of mm -hmm. course, they had to redo it, yep. but yep. Uh, so how, so how we long? actually held sort of a ribbon cutting ceremony for that mural when the yeah. artist was finished. It was Good. fantastic. We did hot cider and donuts out there. Chilly, chilly day because of course he finished in late fall. Yeah. Um, but beautifully attended. We're able to walk up and down the mural and talk about all the pieces of history mm -hmm. that were recreated. Um, it does have three or four coats of a very heavy varnish that of course helps it maintain. Mm -hmm. But like any piece of art, especially an outdoor piece of public art, there will have to be maintenance and the foundation will make sure that things like this are maintained. So there's going to be some piece of endowment or something mm -hmm. to maintain the public art yeah. installations because I, I've been very excited about some of the public art that's gone up in town over the years but there are a few pieces that have really gotten very uh, tired shall we say and um, have pretty much gone away. For example there was a, uh, a poetry piece, a visual video type of thing and I haven't seen that working for years. Oh, so there's where is this that? thing, uh, the uh, the garage at Boltwood. Okay, Into yeah. the, the the garage at Boltwood. The garage at Boltwood. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're really trying not to recreate that whole uh, yeah. scenario or fiasco. So right. yeah, I mean, I, I, I was think... very much a part of that. I got the money for it. It ended up being the most expensive uh, garage in the history of humankind on a per space basis, because um, um, the there was opposition to building up and so we ended up only having down right. and so a uh, piece of ancient history. We know it's a hot topic. We can, we can let it go. Let's hope it'll go better yeah. the second time. Uh, how many stories, by the way, is the uh, garage? Um, it depends who applies to the RFP and what yeah. it looks like. Um, our intention is to apply to the RFP mm -hmm. and what we have um, very roughly sketched out is a two-story, three-level Garage. So one down, two up. Fits uh, actually one down, one level, and one up. Exactly. Got so it. It, it fits about 200 cars, but it remains within the tree line and the pre-existing building line, mm -hmm. so you don't see it. Okay. And um, I think that this town wants to keep a certain aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And if I came in and said, "What about a five-story garage?" I would be, you know, a pariah. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep with tree line, building line. Right. You know, so each and every away. one of these projects that you've described, the five pieces, mm -hmm. requires the town's involvement town. and town boards, including the town council, design, planning, historic, a whole, historic all Keep of going. these yep. boards have a role mm -hmm. in reviewing your ideas, your vision, and uh, helping to shape them and tell you you're going too far here right. or you, you need to trim this or did you think about that. Right. And so there's going to be a really significant role for the town government uh, and so this will be the first thing of it, this kind that the town council our new government and especially our town council is going to be facing mm -hmm. uh, because it's all new yeah and we're coming 
to them with a lot. Yes, all um, at once. All at once. So big visions, big ideas. Well, I think if you look at it too, why we decided to put the five parts together is because they really do, if you, if you had a puzzle, these are the five puzzle pieces that mm -hmm. can change the dynamic. But if you brought just the performing art shell, well, the, the question is, where's the parking? Right. If you bring just the redoing of the North Common, the question is, where's the parking? If you're just doing the parking, it's Nelson Nygaard says we don't really need it. Why are we even looking at that? But mm -hmm. when you look at the greater scope of really creating an arts and cultural center at, in downtown, well, it all sort of fits together. The Kendrick Park Playground, you know, where are those, where are those parking spaces? Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. So looking at it as a five-part piece really ties it all together. And I don't think there was a better way to do it. And mm -hmm. I think if you had gone in piecemeal, it wouldn't have made sense. So it's a vision. It is. And how long is it going to take to build this vision out, assuming that everything is sort of going along yeah. as it should? So I came in and said, I, I know I can raise a million dollars. I know I can do this. Let's have a performing arts shell by fall of 2020. And um, I was met with, you know, lots like, of... Like, yeah. yeah. Welcome to no. Amherst. Um, so it's going to but take a while. But she doesn't know the town. I don't. Well, but she I don't. doesn't know the territory. I, I don't. So um, <laughs> apparently a lot longer than I had envisioned. had envisioned, but it doesn't mean that we can't do it. But and there is excitement building around this vision. Yep, I think so. And yeah. yeah. And so, uh, by the way, so people in town will be able to contribute to this foundation if they, if they like this vision, yeah. and um, as will the businesses in town, mm -hmm. um, and it'll be a way of bringing, t uh, we say town and gown, meaning the colleges and universities yes. together with the town. This is a way of bringing the business community together with the townsfolk to achieve a vision for uh, a next generation vibrancy mm -hmm. of the downtown, and yeah. that's that's your vision. And we've spoken with both the college and the university and the amount of programming that they would love to bring into town mm -hmm. on this. Great. Um, so, you know, wouldn't it be great if, you know, Berthuin and uh, Eisenberg could host some of their pitch nights outside nice. in the fresh air on yeah. the stage. So great. it's got a lot of potential. Good, and so in the final minute, do you have any other thoughts you want to put on the table and uh, and share with us? Um, I think we've got great vision. I think um, there's huge potential and energy. Um, you know, this town council, as their feet are now underneath them, you know, it's been a year. They've got a couple of years left before everybody's going into re-election mode or I'm not being re-elected or I don't want to. Um, I know that Claudia at the chamber has an incredible amount of energy and excitement. I think we're mirroring, mirroring that and that there's a lot of symbiosis happening. Right now with Jeff Kravitz leaving economic development, um, I, I've seen Paul and the town look at this so seriously and they know how important that role is so I think we're going to find a super person to come in there and it's it's a really nice trifecta right now and although I know Amherst is not want to change it might actually have the impotence to change now. And speaking of change, change is coming and you can be involved in it so thank you for being with us today and sharing this vision and all the excitement at our downtown and, and uh, with our bid under your leadership. So thank you. Thank you so and much And thank for you all me. for being here. We'll see you again soon.